guys, I'm back today with another set of five recommendations for you and this time it is my five um, favourite short story collections. I hesitate to use the word favourite because um, they change all the time, I read new things all the time, but these are five short story collections I loved and I think you should read. But that's like, not a very catchy title so we'll probably just go with favourite. I actually for once have most of them here except for one which is um, unusual for me because normally they're on loan to Hannah's library or friends but um yeah the first one I'm going to talk about I don't have with me um so I'll pop a picture of it here and that is The Refugees by Viet Thang Nguyen I'm gonna that's what I practiced um I find it really hard with pronoun I find it really hard with words in general um as my boyfriend will attest to when he reads my essays that my spelling is pretty abysmal for someone who likes to read but I find yeah I find pronunciation really hard but we can all but try. Um, so this collection, The Refugees, is a set of semi-autobiographical short stories by um, the writer who is himself um, Vietnamese American and he and the stories discuss a myriad of different migration experiences from Vietnam to America. They are very soft and lyrical in their tone, they're very understated and I think they are extremely extremely beautifully written they do often end at quite an abrupt finish um you are suddenly cut short from this character that you have come to love and i think some people in general struggle with short stories for that reason because you feel like as a reader you want to demand more you want a bigger arc you want more experience with um these um characters that you've come to love in maybe five or six or seven pages but i think for me that is the beauty of short stories is that you can really experience this shap this snapshot of um, one person's experience and it be really profound and really stark because you were only given the, that short time with them and I think there's maybe not more talent but arguably as much talent and a very different talent in writing short stories that can be as evocative and persuasive in your love for those characters than someone who will pen a novel. But um, anyway, back to the refugees. So it is... Um, I think it, particularly in relation to migration it's a very clever um, literary device by cutting these these stories short because I think um, he's trying to say that these are not the only experiences of these characters this is not their only identity as one as a refugee or a migrant they have a myriad of other experiences in their lives that are arguably more important or as important as this one part but um, in general, I feel like a lot of people or the Western media love to fixate on the identity of a refugee as being that is all they can be because they are someone who has left somewhere and arrived somewhere else and then we sort of stamp them with that for the rest of their lives, both politically through the way that the system works and also just as a, I guess, a society, the way that we view them as this very black and white um, situation. So I actually thought that was in favour of the book. There was a bit of critique about it. I read when it's had a recent um, recent posting on Bookstagram, people saying they found the, the writing quite dull and quite um, sombre in tone. But I would like to point out that I read some really interesting um, writing about it on, um, I think on Goodreads or on another review site where they were talking about someone had read it in its in Vietnamese and because Vietnamese is a tonal language that it um the story comes across as very differently because the words in Vietnamese speak emotion for themselves if that makes sense the way the words sound can create a feeling of sadness without the writer needing to use the word sad which I think is so interesting and also really really beautiful so when it's been translated into English obviously a lot of that tonality has been lost even through the work of an excellent translator it's not going to be the same and I think that that um, is a reminder to a lot of people who read if you read a lot in translation or even if you don't if you ever do that um, you are coming at it at a bias when we read in English because there's a lot of assumptions about good English writing that maybe is a completely different set of literary rules when you write in another language or you publish in another country first. And I think that's definitely something that's had me considering it a lot. And I have said before, and I will really try to make a video soon on my favorite translated books from a lot of different languages. Um, but yeah, that's The Refugees. Then the next one I do have in physical format is The Lot by Brian Washington. I read this earlier this year and it's one of my favourite books I've read this year. Like, I'm going to say about every book. 
But um, Brian Washington's actually got his debut novel coming out. I think it released in the US in November, but we won't see it in the UK until early next year, which I'm dying to read because I think he is a fantastic writer. So this book lot really um, hones in on place as the, the unifying theme before these stories. It's set in Houston in Texas. Um, and Washington is talking a lot about um, gentrification of the city, the um, the pushing out of its native residents or um, lots of different communities, including the migrant community from um, Southern and Central America and the way that the city is gaining in popularity for white people and the, the other gentrification of the area of, I think it's East Houston that he's talking about specifically. But um, I just thought this was so, so well done. It's got interconnecting characters, which I think if you're not a reader of short stories, that can be really helpful, something to grab onto because a character will reappear in another character's short story and you can feel sort of like a, uh, a more linear narrative than you might do in short stories that have no, um, no unifying element except for their theme. And there's an, the unnamed narrator in here who follows us through most of the stories and voices the different Houston um, residents in the different areas of the city and it talks a lot about home and the idea that a city is just a vessel for holding um, life and for holding people and the geography of a home as a place um, especially people who have transplanted there from other places in America or from different countries altogether and and again touches on the assimilation of that into um, a white American culture. He talks a lot about identity and otherness, but he doesn't hyper focus on that as a theme of each character. There's so many other, um, I guess, defining features aside from the character's nationality and race, which I really liked because when I read a article by Washington, which I linked below an interview, he talked about how when um, working class writers or writers from any other margin that are not um, not the standard for um published writers that there's often this implication that they will only be writing about that like oh you're poor so you will be writing about poor people or you're black so you must only write about black people and it's that real narrowness of a, of a views that um someone who's been marginalized will only ever want to write about their marginalization which is obviously like completely defunct as an idea but i think it's a really really excellent exploration of yeah, the geography of a place and what it means to call a place home. So yeah, I absolutely adore this. And how beautiful is this cover? Um, another collection which I read this summer as well was um, What It Means When a Man Falls From the Sky by Leslie Nenka Am Amar. And this, um, she is British Nigerian and she's written a collection of stories set between Nigeria, America and the UK, I would say. This is actually her debut collection, but it reads like a, a seasoned short story writer. The stories are mainly focused on women, their different experiences of um, being hopeful or being hopeless and the different identities that they take up dependent on the um, place that they are in their life. Um, she really inverts that ideology of colonialism and the idea that the British saved Africa. Um, there's this one particular story where she talks about um, Britain and North America having experienced extreme climate destruction and the British government like forming a deal with um, parts of Nigeria to take on ref um, to take on residents as climate refugees, which I think is a fantastic subversion and like searing hot take on the current refugee crisis and the impending um, next migration wave of climate refugees that we will see in the next few years. But there's no pretense here that she is trying to do anything other than tell a story for what it is. That it, I'm, I don't know really how to say it, but basically they're not pretentious is what I mean. They're not, she's not trying to do anything bigger than right for the sake of telling a good story. And I think that that's really fantastic. I think love comes up a lot in this and she talks about relationships in their different forms, platonic love, familial love, um, as well as romantic love. And I think that's a really beautiful unifying theme in the stories. She does touch on magical realism in one story, which I'm not normally a magical realism reader, but this one story called, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about a ba it's about um, babies and like a mother, different mothers having different babies that are built from different materials depending on their position in the caste system. So you might have a baby from wool or a baby from stone or a baby from hair and what that sort of um, 
denotes about your your position in society at the time and I, I thought that was again really really clever so she plays with a lot of different themes but they all come back to the idea of identity and love which is fantastic okay moving on from there the next book I read actually a really long time ago um and I think I will have to read up the synopsis of it to tell you about it but it is Young Skins by Colin Barrett so this, um, these stories all take place in one town in rural Ireland and Barrett has um, created a cast of characters that are extremely menacing and um, forceful in their need to assert their often ma like quite toxic masculinity. And I think um, Barrett plays with the idea of nature and the dichotomy between um, human existence and the natural world around us and what that means and what we as people are impacting on nature and what nature can do to us like the the sheer force of mother nature there's this one absolutely horrendous like as in horrendous in its force of how horrifying it is to read story about a river and a like a a young suicide which is just was harrowing these stories are extremely dark and very full frontal in their need to show you the dark side of life it looks at irish folklore and the um the, the idea of a forgotten town the the industrial towns that have been left behind through the post-industrial move towards big city life and the i guess the decrepitness of some of these places and the people that have fallen on hard times or have you have fallen on you know mental health crisis or substance abuse issues to cope with the changing experiences of the place around them it's a really staggering book to read and a really um one that te takes your whole attention to consume at once but one i really really loved and actually would really love to reread okay and the last collection i'm going to talk about is difficult women by roxanne gay uh, i think i mentioned my love for roxanne gay before she is an absolute intellectual powerhouse she can do no wrong in my eyes but I think Difficult Women is a really really interesting set of stories that speaks to the pain and the collective um, terror it is to be a woman and what it means to occupy that space as second to a man in a patriarchal society. She looks at different, each story features a different kind of woman, not in the tropey stereotypical sense, but as in a woman that's, ex that's experienced privilege or poverty or revenge or lust or love and I guess it it looks at love in in a lot of different ways in it but it looks really keenly at occupying a female body and the the idea that that will always leave you in deficit even if you in any other intersect of your life are privileged you'll always be a woman so for example like I will always have that as a mark against me even if I am white able-bodied middle class all those other things but you'll always be a woman and then she also features women who are marginalized in other intersections who are queer who are poor who are black who are um disabled and i think it's a really well thought out cast of voices that builds to this cacophony of mutual pain and the the idea that t what ties us all together is the female experience or the the experience of yeah living in a in a body that is used and abused by men and, and it is really sad it's a really um stark look at womanhood it, it's not um it's not all flowers and roses um but it's definitely one worth reading if you are interested in gender in female experience in you know a take on on current modern society to fight for equality and all those sorts of things it's one that can um really get you thinking about all the different intersections of um female life so yeah that is the last book i'm going to tell you about in my um five short stories i do have of course lots of others as always to recommend but um i will keep with those for now and i will um create another one of these maybe at the end of the year to show you some more short stories that i have read and loved thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time bye